on YouTube, it's Michael here, and in the next four videos, I'll be showing you everything that is on the Casio CTK611 keyboard. Now, I got given this keyboard back in June or July, back in 2007, from work. Although there's nothing wrong with this keyboard, um, it's one of those insurance jobs. I think maybe it had a water spillage or similar, but still, everything works on it regardless. Now I'm not sure exactly what year this keyboard was released, I'm guessing that it was released around 1998 or 1999. And also, as well as the CTK611 here, um, there was two other keyboards in this range, there was the Casio CTK601 which was exactly the same as this keyboard, but you have a different coloured casing and the LCD display here doesn't light up, so it's not backlit. And the other keyboard was the Casio WK1200, which was also exactly the same as this keyboard, but instead of pitch bend buttons, you actually had a pitch bend wheel there. And also on the WK1200, you had an extra octave of keys. So this keyboard here has 61 keys, but the WK1200 had 73 keys. So there's um, an extra octave of keys. So those are the um, other two keyboards in the range. And now, on this video, I'll be going through with you a tutorial of the Casio CTK611, so you can get to know how to use its features. So here is the tutorial of the Casio CTK611. Thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you of this tutorial of the Casio CTK611 is the mode here and some of the rhythm controls. So first of all, we're gonna show the mode. At the moment, it is currently set to normal, but we also have Casio chord, fingered, and full range chord. So at the moment, it's set to normal, which is just your voices or tones, as Casio calls them. And then we have Casio chord, which is basically what Yamaha calls single finger mode, with the rhythms. So you, you only have to use one finger to play chords. And to get minor chords and minor seventh and major seventh, etc., you just do it like this. So there's the minor, major seventh, minor seventh. And so on. And then we have fingered mode which is um, what Yamaha calls fingered, which you use um, certain multiple fingers to play chords. Because it wouldn't work if you just use one finger. You need to do multiple fingers. And if Last of all, with the mode, we have the full range chord, which is the entire keyboard. So you get the void, you get the tones and the chords. So it's just like this. Casio doesn't have with the fingered mode is the bass inversion so that the bass plays on the lowest note but you can do that with the full range chord so we're going to do like um, a C chord with the bass inversion so here's a C chord as normal and then we have the bass inversion so the bass will be G though the chord will be C or E so just like that Another thing I want to show you is that this keyboard doesn't have a um, pitch bend wheel. However, 
we have here pitch bend buttons. So I'm going to select a different sound that is suitable for this. Yeah, any, anything like that. And with the pitch bend and buttons here, you can alter the pitch. And also here with them, we have them, some of the rhythm controls. This is just some of the rhythm controls. There are some more rhythm controls. Um, because um, it's a good thing for this range of keyboard is that you can actually turn channel parts on and off with the sounds and styles. And you can also revoice the styles as well. So I think that's pretty good for this range of keyboard. But I will show you that later on in this video. And now with these ribbon controls here, we have, the, well, in the middle, we have the start stop, which is the, the styles, the start and stop. And then we have the synchro ending. If you press synchro, then press um, the left keys, the keyboard waits for you to play the rhythm. And also this keyboard has two variations and two fillings per style, which I'll show you. keyboard also has one intro and one ending per style. So that was the intro and now the ending. So there you have it. So that is the mode and some of the rhythm controls and the pitch bend buttons. And now what I'm going to show you is some of the functions with these buttons here. So first of all, what I'm going to show you is the touch response button in which you can turn the touch sensitivity on and off. So at the moment it's currently on. But press the touch response button and the touch sensitivity is turned off. Then just turn it back on to turn it on again. And then we have the transpose, tune and MIDI, but I don't have anything MIDI up on this keyboard, so I fortunately can't show you that. So we have the transpose to transpose the keyboard. goes up to 12 to minus 12 and then you just press these two buttons simultaneously to get the default transpose and then we have here the pitch bend range for the pitch bend buttons so it's on two at the moment so we can it goes up to 12 goes up to 12 to one so this is one Let's just find another sound for that. So here's the pitch bend range. And using these cursors here, we can get to different functions with the um, functions like the transpose. So if we've got um, transpose selected, we can use these cursors here and we can go to tuning to tune the keyboard. Goes up to 50.
to minus 50. And you just press these two simultaneously to get the default tuning. And now I'm going to show you the layer and the split. So we just put this back to piano. And first of all, I'm going to show you the layer in which you can layer another sound on top of the main sound. So we've got piano here. And now we've got layer selected. We ha now have piano and strings. And now with the layer selected, we can also change the voices of the layer. So we have harp, for, in for instance, on top of the piano. Or pizzicato strings, or tremolo strings. Or finger bass. So that's the split, I'm sorry, that's the layer. And now for the split section is we, in, in which we can split the keyboard into two. So with the split now turned on, we now have something for the left side of the keyboard. can also change the voices of the split when split has been selected so So that's the layer and split sections. And now I'm going to show you the reverb effects. So I'll just turn split off. Now, with the, um, the reverb we have on the screen here, just here, if you can see it, we have here hall, stage and rim. When you turn on the keyboard, the reverb is currently set to stage. So I'm gonna find a sound that is suitable for this so you can like, notice the reverb effects. So we've got three types of reverbs and using this button here we can toggle between the reverb effects. So here is the rim effect. And we have the stage effect. And finally, we have the hall effect. And here is no, no reverb at all. So those are the three reverb types. And now I'm going to show you the comp volume in which we can turn up and down the um, rhythm. So I will turn on the rhythm for this. And we can toggle the volume of the um, accompaniment. these two buttons simultaneously to get the default volume. So that's the reverb effects and the accompaniment volume. And now the next thing that I want to show you is the free session here, in which each rhythm has chord progressions so that you can freely use the keyboard voices throughout the entire keyboard. 
So each rhythm has its own chord progression. So we just press free session. And not only does it give you the chord progressions of certain styles, but it also gives you the suitable sound. So it's basically a one touch setting as well. And then from here, we just press start, stop. And the keyboard does the rest. In which you can use the entire keyboard to um, make a melody. Um, that's a pretty cool feature and also using these um, bottom keys here you can decide which chord you want so it's currently on this setting but if we press synchro and press one of these we can have it to as this so we can change different chords so this is on now it starts with D, then we can do it again with an E, starting with E. Or we can have it starting with, let's say, A. So yeah, really, a really good feature when you want to use the entire keyboard for melodies using free session. Now let me show you another example. So we're gonna select another rhythm. The good thing about the free session that it also gives you the default tempo of the rhythm. There we go. And again, using the, um, the left keys, we can change the chords, like this. Or this. And now we're going to do one more example with a free session. We're going to select a, another rhythm. So let's just say this star, for instance. Let's just, there you go. Then it's got the default tempo and the sound.
you, there you have it. I think that's a pretty good feature for this keyboard, the free session in which you can let the rhythms play itself with the chord progressions, allowing you to use the entire keyboard for the melodies. And that is the free session. And now the next thing that I want to show you is the mixer function here, in which you can turn channel parts on and off with the sounds and styles and revoice the styles. So first of all, I'm going to select a style. And then using the function here, we can turn channel parts on and off. So I will show you that now. And with the mixer, oh, just a quick thing to, just to tell you that the rhythm section is um, from channel seven to 10. So we're gonna turn parts of those on and off. And using these um, buttons here, we can select between channels one to 16. So here's channel seven. And we have channel eight. So we can turn parts on and off. Or we'll press it again to have it as a solo. Channel 10 is usually the drums, so we can turn that off. We'll have it solo. And channel nine is the bass. So now that's turned off. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to revoice the parts of the styles. So if you, if you go to that cursor there to go down, this is where you can change the sounds, the volume and so on, which I will show you. So, we're actually going to revoice the drums. So there you go, I'm revoicing the drum parts of the style. As it's, a, as it's the drums that I'm, that I'm revoicing, you can't revoice it into anything like piano or anything like that. It goes from drum kit one to drum kit eight. Those are the only sounds that I can select using the drum parts of the style. So I just put that back to normal. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to revoice the bass part. So we just press that cursor button here and then we can select different bass sounds. and you just press these two simultaneously. Oh, no, wait, no, it doesn't happen like that, sorry. I 
I thought that if you press these two simultaneously, you get the um, default sound for that part of the rhythm, but I was wrong, so sorry about that. So let's just select it again. And now I'm going to revoice channel eight. So there you have it, that's how you revoice parts of a style. And now I'm going to show you some other functions with the channels, with the mixer. So yeah, that previously that's how you um, turn channel parts of a style on and off and revoicing parts of a style. But now we can do, we can do other things as well on the um, channel mixer. So we can change the tones, we can alter the volume, the pan pot, the tuning, the transpose, expression, and so on. So I'll show you a few of those now. So let's just play the rhythm again. Another little pointer is that um, with the drum parts of the channel, you can't transpose those or tune those, only the voice parts, like the bass and the chords and so on. So here we go. So let's, ch let's take channel 7 for instance. We can alter the volume just like what I'm doing here. And change the pan pot. So when the pan pot is up to 100 and 127, it goes from the right side of the speaker. But if, it's go, if it goes down to zero, it only comes out of the left side of the speaker. And then we have the fine tune, in which we can tune it. So I've, I've tuned that part of the style. And we can also transpose it as well. So let's just say transpose four. Or six. All the other parts are in the C chord, whereas this one is transposed. Let's just put that back to normal. I think that's a really cool feature where you can transpose like separate parts as well and tune them as well. Um, let's do an, another example of the transpose and tuning. Um, let's take the bass part, for instance. We can tune that and transpose that as well. So here's the, ch here's the tuning. Transpose. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty neat feature. Now I'm going to show you a few more examples of what you can do with the mixer here. So yeah, that's the program, you can change the sounds, volume. And finally, we have expression. Which to me sounds like the, the expression is basically the volume as well. Just like that. So 
there you have it. To me, I think that's quite a pretty neat feature in which you can use the mixer to um, transpose parts of a style, revoice them, change the volumes and so on, as I did here. I just want to show you um, one more thing with the mixer, one or two more things, shall I say. If we go to channel one, which is basically the sound that we're on now. We can also turn that off as well. We'll have that solo as well. And I believe if I turn layer and split on, there you go, the, um, the layer is the second channel, whereas what looks to me on the screen is that the, the layer is channel three and four. So, oh, I see why it's, oh no, my mistake. I thought it was merging with the um, layer, but no. So we can turn these parts on and off as well. So we can turn channel one on, which um, off rather, so all we're getting is the layer. Or we can turn channel two on and off. And then we can also have channel three on and off. Channel one is the main voice, Channel two is the layer voice, and channel three is the split voice. Oh, I see. Because the um, layer can have, I'm um, sorry, the split can have two voices as well. I didn't even know this until now, so apologies. Then turn that one back on. Oh, we can have it as solo as well. And then finally we have channel, channel four, which is the second part of the split voice. That synth strings that we're hearing now. We can turn that off. So there you have it. That's the mixer and how to turn parts on and off with the sounds and styles and revoicing and transposing parts of a style as well. And now the next thing that I want to show you is the synth function here in which you can store and create your own sounds. Now on this keyboard, even though it says on here that it has 200 tones. Well, technically it doesn't have exactly like 200 tones. We have 168 tones built in and the last 32 is um, user tones in which you can create your own sounds. So for this instance, we're going to use this sound, the alto sax. And in order to create our sound with this um, voice, we just press synth. And from here, we can select our own sounds here, so. And then from here, we can change the amp set, the, the attack rate, release rate, pitch set, the level, the touch sensitivity, the pan pot, and so on. So we're going to do that. We're going to select the um, amp set so we can alter our sound. Yeah, so we have it like that. 
and then we can change the attack rate on here. And then we can alter the release rate as well. Curses, we can have the pitch set. So yeah, we're going to select that one, and the pitch, the level, which is basically the um, volume of the tone, so we're going to leave that as it is, but you can alter that, and then we have the touch sensitivity, so we can have it to... Um, Zero, which is no touch sensitivity. So we're going to, we're going to leave that one. So yes, and we have the pan pot, so which goes to 63 to minus 63, but we're going to leave it as it is, so we can have it sound on both speakers. And that's the stuff we can do with the um, synth function. And now in order to save it, we'll press the synth button again, and it's telling us if we want to save, and using the cursor buttons here, press the down one, and from here we can actually save it to one of the 32 user tones. So for this instance, we're going to save it onto um, user tone one. We just press the down button again, and there you go. Your user tone has been saved. So this is um, user tone two, which I haven't stored anything on it yet, but this is the one that we stored, user tone one. So that's user tone one saved. And now I'm going to show another example with the um, synth function. So we're going to select, we're going to select another tone. Um, let's see which sound shall we choose. Uh, we're going to use, let's just do a simple square wave synth. So we're going to use that sound. And again, we're going to use the synth function to create our own sound using that synth sound. So we do the amp set. And then we're going to do the attack rate. Yeah, 
the release rate. The pitch set. Yeah, we're going to use that one. And the pitch itself. The level, which is the volume, so we're going to leave it as it is. The touch sensitivity. And the pan pot, which we're going to leave as is. So there you have it. There's our other tone um, created. We press enter, and this time, oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. There you go. Just press synth again to save it, and this time we're going to store it onto user tone number two. And then we've got our second tone saved. So here's our first one. And our second one that we've just done now. And now I'm going to show you one more example of the synth function. Let's try just a standard piano sound, for instance. Just this piano sound. And let's see if we can make something good out of that. So we just go to the synth function again. Do the amp set. Yeah, we'll take that one. And then the attack rate. Let's just say this one. The release rate. Set. Yeah, we'll select that one. The pitch itself. The level, which is the um, volume, so we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it as it is. The touch sensitivity, we'll leave that alone. The pan pot, we'll leave that as well. And then we're done. We just press the synth button again. It's telling us to save. We we'll press enter, this button here. And this time we're going to save it onto user tone three. Press the enter button again. And then your sound is saved. So here is the first one. The second one. And the last one. So there you have it, and this, and this is how you use the synth function to create and store your own sounds into 32 user tones. And now I'm going to show you how to record your own songs on this keyboard. So first of all, I'm going to select my um, rhythm, and then press the free session because of the one touch setting of the rhythm. So now that we've got our rhythm and sound selected, 
we just press the memory button here, press it again until the screen comes up saying record number. Now you can record up to two songs on this keyboard, but the songs on the screen shows as zero to one, which is basically one to two. And then what we do, we're going to um, select track number one, which is intended for the rhythm chords. So now I just press the synchro here and now the keyboard waits for me to play chords with my left hand. So here we go. Now that we've got that recorded, yes, now that we've got that recorded, we can go back to the memory and this time press number two. So we can record a part for number two. See, um, we have here a six track sequencer. The first one is for the um, rhythm styles and the chord, whilst the, the other five are for the melodies. So now that we've got our rhythm recorded, we can now play something with our right hand using the melody. So here we go. So now we've got the um, rhythm and the melody recorded. And now that we've got track one and two recorded, Let's do one for track number three. So we just go to, let's go back to record and then press number three. And this time I'm going to select another sound. So we're going to select this sound for instance. Then we're going to press the synchro button. And now the keyboard waits for us to play the first key. So here we go. So now that we've got track number one, two and three recorded, we can now play them back. We just go to memory, play number one. Well, it says zero on the screen. So that's all the tracks I want to record for this song. I've recorded three, though you can have up to six, as it's a six track sequencer. The first one being for the um, rhythms and chords, and these five are for the melodies. And now for the next example for the recording songs, we're going to record the next one, which is record number one, even though it means two. And this time, I'm not going to do a um, rhythm, I'm just going to do just um, sort of like an orchestra from scratch. So first of all, um, as, the, as that button's for the rhythm and chords, so we're not going to select that, we are going to select 
memory track number two instead. So we're going to select a sound. There we go. And now the keyboard waits for us to play. So here we go. Now that we got that track recorded, we can now play that back. Okay, so now that we've got that part recorded, we can now go back to the memory and we're going to record this track here, track number three. We're going to select our sound, press the synchro, and now the keyboard waits for us to play the first key. So here we go. And now we've got that track recorded, we can now play that back. Okay, so let's just do one more example of um, recording songs about rhythms. We go to memory again, and this time I'm going to record memory track number four. And we're going to select our sound, which would just be the acoustic bass sound. Press synchro. And then the keyboard waits for us to play the first key. So here we go. And now that we've got that part recorded, we can now play those back. So there you have it. And that is how you record your own songs using the memories to select these um, memory tracks here to record your own songs. We're doing each part individually. Just go to the memory and we just select the record and select one of the six tracks. And that is how you record your own songs. And now I'm going to show you how to delete tracks or the entire song so that you make room for another song that you want to record. So. I'm going to um, delete this one, the, the, um, the first one that I've done. I'll show you what it is. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to delete parts of it until I delete the entire song. So we just go to press the memory button here and have it on um, record standby. And then from here, you hold down the memory button until the screen comes up, comes up saying track delete. And then you can choose. Oh, there we go. And then we can choose which track we want to delete. We, we can delete an individual one. Or we can delete the whole lot. Just like that. So first of all, I'm going to delete one track. And from here, we just Press this enter button here. Oh. Press enter. 
And then there you go. The track has been deleted. But in order to delete all of the tracks, we hold down the memory button and press the um, memory track buttons that have got recorded parts in it. So we've got them selected and then we just press enter. And there you go. That's the entire song deleted, which means that you have room to record another song. And now I want to show you how to use the step function to correct mistakes during your recording. So first of all, I'm going to record a song. So I'm going to record number one and select track number two. It's on the grand piano sound. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make some mistakes on purpose so that I can show you how to correct them. So here we go. So that's my song recorded. Um, I've made some mistakes on purpose, so I can give you an example of the step function next. But that was a mistake. Oh, and that was a mistake as well. So there, there are some mistakes that I've made on purpose, so I can give you an example on how to correct those mistakes. So we go into memory, and then we go to step, hang on, uh, there we go. Um, press the track that we recorded, and then from here, we can correct mistakes that we've made. So here's the notes that I've done. Oh, that was a mistake. And um, to correct mistakes, you can also use these keypads here. to um, correct mistakes, or we can just use the um, keys to correct mistakes, like this. Oh, that's better. Oh, there you go. was a mistake so we just correct that oh that was a mistake we can also use these as well oh wait no we can't sorry so we can do this or that to correct the mistake oh that was a mistake so And that's the end of our recorded. That's the end of our recording. And now that we have um, corrected the wrong notes, we can now get out of step and then play back our song. Notice that there are no mistakes now as I've corrected them. So there you have it, and that is how you use the step function to correct wrong notes from your recording so that you can, um, if you made a mistake, you can, use a step, uh, you can use a step function to correct mistakes during your recording. Again, that is how you use step function to correct mistakes during your recording. 
And now another thing that I want to show you quickly is that not only these buttons are for the memory track, but they are also drum pads as well. <coughs> Now, depending on which rhythm you select, the drum pads change. So I'll just go through some like, different rhythms. But not, not, not only that, but we can just go to the mixer part which is channel 10, which is the drums of the rhythm. And um, we can actually change the drum sounds, which will also tra change the drum pads here. <laughs> so yes. So like, it doesn't always depend on the rhythm that you select with the drum pads. You can also go to the mixer and change the drum kits of any style. And these drum pads will change as well. So that's just the um, drum pads of the keyboard, which also acts as the memory track when you're recording songs. So again, not only does these buttons act as memory tracks for recordings, they are also used for drum pads as well. And now, the very last thing that I want to show you of this tutorial of the Casio CTK611, and that is the sustain. We have a sustain jack on this keyboard, but not only is it a sustain pedal for, for things like this, it can also be assigned for a few other settings as well. So in order to um, get to the settings, we just change the rhythms as well. So we just go to this um, function here, press it three times. And from here, we have the, you know, the pitch bend range, the, the pitch bend range and such, as I showed you before, earlier on in this video, just keep going through it. And then we have here, the sustain section. It says on the screen, oh, sus jack, which is for the um, sustain. Sus means sustain. In which you have the sustain pedal. As a, um, yeah, as a sustain pedal, sorry. And then we have other functions for it as well. We have the, it's this SOS, which means sostenuto, in which you um, hold down the keys and the pedal afterwards and they will be sustained, while the other keys are not sustained. And another effect is the soft. So when the keys are, when the pedal is being pressed down, the sounds will sound more softer. So here, here we go. It almost acts like it's a, sort of like a volume switch, though I know it's not. It just makes the sound sound more soft. And then finally, with the um, sustain assignable, we have the rhythm, which acts the same way as the start-stop button. So here's an example. Here's me pressing the pedal now. Oh, sorry, that's my song. <laughs> um, we we'll select rhythm. There we go. Yeah, sorry about this. Um, let's just get out of memory. There we go. So using the sustain pedal, when that's assigned to the rhythm, acts as if you're pressing the start stop button. And I'm going to press it again. And it stops. So once more time, I, I'll, I'll press it again. And the rhythm starts. 
when I press it again, the rhythm stops. And I think that is all of the um, assignable functions you can have with the sustain pedal. So now it's back onto sustain. And that is the sustain slash assignable in which you can assign the pedal to do different functions. Okay, so this is now the end of this tutorial of the Casio CTK611 keyboard. I do hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and that you have found it useful. So please do write back to me and tell me what you think. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video in which I'll be showing you the sounds.